I'm Mike B from the Who Dares Rolls podcast and this is Who Dares Rolls TV and today we're going to be looking at one of my most favourite games, my probably my desert island game. If I was going to be stranded on such a desolate thing then aside from a packet of pork scratchings I would want Snowdonia at my side and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> So, Snowdonia came out in 2012 from Tony Boydell. Uh, he's already produced a ton of games by then, but uh, Snowdonia is probably his crowning glory at the moment. He's produced other stuff since, like Guilds of London and Ivor the Engine, um, and they're great games, and they're wonderful games, but Snowdonia, um, for me, I think is where Tony reached his zenith of game design. Every, every great designer, every game designer has one great game in them, one game that they will be remembered for that will be played ad nauseum forever and ever, amen. Uh, Matt Leacock, as an example, was Pandemic. Uh, that's guaranteed to be his, his defining moment. Well, Tony Boydell's defining moment, his game, the game that's gonna be remembered for, that's gonna just play and play and play, is, for my money, Snowdonia. And let's find out why. Let's go for a, a brief overview of the rules of it, and, uh, and I'll pick out some bits as we go, and then I'll, I'll sum up all the feelings I have in between this, of, of why this is such a great game. So, um, number one, what is Snowdonia? Well, it's a, a game of us, sees us as teams of workers, and what we're doing is we're building the Snowdonian railway up the mountainside. That's the simple idea of the game. So, whereas some train games have you building huge rail networks and across globes and worlds and, and nations, this is a, a microcosm of it. Is This is literally building one track all we're doing, just one tiny micro track we're building up a mountain in Wales. Really simple stuff. Um, yet, it does what it does remarkably well. So, what is it? What type of game is it? Well, it's predominantly a worker placement game with a lot of other interesting little tweaks to it uh, that makes this so special. Um, so, as we have a look at the board here, as you can see, there is a series of cards which again in a revolutionary step and I, I never encountered this uh, method of play in a game before and very few since using a randomized set of cards around some tr train stations that sets up part of the board which is a great great thing because it means every time you play it's never going to be the same uh, so what are we doing so we're using our workers and we start the game with two of these uh, everyone has two and this is a setup for a free player game with a third worker in the pub, which we can release him later on by buying trains, and they're down here. We'll go into a bit more to that in a minute. So on our turn, we have to place one of our workers, and across the top here of the board, we have a set, a series of actions that we can take with spaces on them for how many workers can go in there. These change depending on the amount of players are playing the game. So the actions across the top here, so action A, the top action, um, will allow us to collect resources, these cubes. Um, so the orange cubes represent iron ore, these represent stone, and these are coal. And these will be used in various ways throughout the game to make rails that we'll be using to build tracks and trains, um, or to recycle or build stations and areas on the board. Uh, then we can have option two, which is to excavate, um, which has got a shovel on it. So two people can do that, and excavating means that we will remove rubble off of these cards that are around the board. And we start from the, the far start of the track all the way up around. So as we remove rubble, it always comes off from the furthest card away as we go slowly, slowly up the track. Um, then we've got uh, this conversion table here, which we can convert free iron ore into a rail, which is very important piece of kit during the game, uh, or rubble, which we'll be getting off of these stones, off of these uh, cards by excavating them, and that can be converted into a stone. Next is we can build actual tracks, we can lay track. We need rail or track to be able to do that. If we've got that, we can do that, and we can lay that. Um, that is controlled by how much of that we can lay is down here in this section of ore down here Which we can see is the work rates of how much excavation we do when we excavate how many tracks we can do And this is affected by a level system which we're we'll touch on in a second So E is used um, to build a station if we've excavated track up to a station and we've excavated the rubble off it That we can we can build on the station that is various points on the stations that allow us to use different goods like the stone or rails to build and score points um, or we can actually buy a train. Um, we can only buy a train when the event track was down here has reached that point which is point two on the event track and I will come to the event track in one moment. Um, 
option F is we can buy a contract card. One of the contract cards which are up here, we can have one of those, you can select one and take them. What they do is they give you um, initially a perk at the top there, which can be used in the in-game scoring, stuff that you can hand in either supplies and goods that you've collected throughout the game, um, or, or actions that you've taken, and they will give you points based on that. Um, below that is a one-time action that could be used by tapping the card, um, and that relates to, depending on what the letter is on there, what of these actions that relates to it. It will just give you an additional perk on top of doing that. Um, and finally, G at the very end there, which everyone can go to, it's not limited in space, that allows you to move your surveyor, with these lovely chaps down here, one space up to the next nearest station. Um, what that does, or how that works, is each station has a victory point total on it. Um, and the further up along your surveyor goes, the more victory points you'll score for him at the end of the game. So that's how that works. We come on to probably to the other main part, the other two bits of the board. Um, so this is a vent track. What we have is this lovely bag of goodies here. These are resources. It contains more iron ore, more stone, more coal. Um, and what you can do throughout the game is these are refilled at the end of a round. When everyone's taking their actions, these are refilled from this bag, um, dependent on the ratio here, how many PRs are playing. As you pull these out, what you will do is you'll obviously pull out them, you'll get these white cubes. And whenever one of these is pulled, um, it goes onto the event down here, this track. So on the first one, it will cause a excavate action is, and this is the game having like a, a, a automated player that's playing alongside you to kind of keep the pace rolling on this game. So that will excavate depending on what level is on here, areas across the board. So you're constantly playing catch up. The game is kind of racing ahead of you. So you've got to kind of race to keep up. Um, this allows you to unlock trains. Um, so you can then buy trains once that's done there. This one here will lay track, again, using the track laying, wherever that rating is on there. Um, once we reach here, it will build a station. These cubes then go back into the bag and so on and so forth. And it keeps going along until eventually it reaches the end of this uh, track here. And then it will just rinse and repeat um, until basically the game races past you and finishes. So it is a race, the game is a race, and it's you really trying to get the most amount of points and do the most amount of stuff before the game ends. And it, every game is pretty brisk. It's, it it's, it's never hangs around. It's, it gives you plenty of time to think on what you're doing, but due to this automated system, as the game is kind of charging ahead of you, then you're racing to make the best of every move you make to get the most amount of points. And final parts of the game is, so we've got the weather track here. Um, and these are controlled by these backs of these uh, contract cards. And as these show, they show you what sort of weather you're going to be getting. River. Weather plays an important part of the game. Um, each of these discs represent a type of weather. Um, a blue is rain. So what ra rain will do is it will cause these tracks here to decrease by one. So they actually limit the amount of excavating and track laying you can do. Fog, when fog has come down, pretty much you're stuffed. You can't do any actions that relate around excavating or laying track. You just can't do them, so there's no point wasting actions on them. Uh, sun is brilliant because what that does is that increases the uh, these by two for excavation and one for laying track. So the more sun you get, the more lovely weather you've got, the more you can do on the board. Other than that, the only other things you're doing is you're buying the trains. Trains are quite handy because they give you a perk. So you buy a train with rail, and they will give you usually some victory points, um, and they have the abilities. Some of them allow you to excavate more, uh, some will allow you to get more cubes, some will allow you to, the amount of cubes you can convert of iron ore into a rail is limited, all different things. But the also most important, exciting thing that they do is allow you to spend one coal at the start of every round to get your worker out of the pub, which means it gives you free actions. And free actions in this game is quite an important thing. And that's Snowdonia, pretty much that's the game. It's a very easy thing to do. You're placing your actions, taking your actions, Contracts are replaced, the weather goes out, and, and the bag, event bag, happens. Um, and it's rinse repeat until eventually, when someone's made it to the end of the line, or in fact, the game's raced ahead of you and it's got to that point, and the last station has is, is been built, um, and then the game ends. And then we score, we score based on what we've done on the board, the scores you will have got during that, so any anyway, you've excavated any points you've gained by building stations, plus you'll then be able to cash in your contract cards, which will give you all sorts of multipliers and points dependent again on how much rubble you've got and um, any resources you've got what you've built what trains you've got all kind of varies so you're building a strategy throughout the game um, again it gives you lots of options there 
So it's got a feel of Agricola in the way that the cards, the multi-use cards, um, the contract cards, a bit of uh, Stone Age in the worker placement. It's the same sort of level as that as well. Yet, you know, it feels like it should be spoken about in those same areas. It should be one of those games that was revered as much as Agricola or Stone Age. It, it, it feels like it's that level of classic. Yet, for some reason, it doesn't appear to be in the consciousness of people out there. It seems to be one of those sort of sleepers that's just just under the radar, um, where a slick few of obviously very privileged and clever gamers have taken it upon their shoulders to love and enjoy the game and cherish it, which everyone, I believe, should do. Um, so, I love the game. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's just such a solid, simple, fast, great, entertaining game. The, every round, you've only got literally usually two to three decisions to make. It's just where you're going to place your workers. Yet each of those is just riddled with possibilities. It's, uh, you know, are you going to block people off? Are you going to take jump in early to get this because it's limited space? You're going to get the contract. You're going for the score there. Are you going to clear rubble here? Where you come in the game, where you play on turn order makes a big difference because someone excavating here and clearing rubble might leave the way open for someone else to lay the track. Um, there's just so many combinations of strategies to the game with also the variety of how the board changes every time you play it um, it's just tantalizingly just a lovely puzzle and thing to save and play um, as i say it plays really fast um, you're looking at an hour hour and a half absolute max of a game even with like four to five players because it turns along with this bag of evil events occurring um, which is a lovely lovely thing as well i love the fact there because it adds a whole new strategy to the game because where in some games you may be hoarding resources that's a dangerous dangerous thing to do because the more resources that players are holding means that the less resources are in that bag which means the more likelihood of these white cubes coming out during the game which essentially is just going to speed up the process it's it's, it's you know you're you're pretty much holding on to that stuff is your is your doom because the game rocket through to a finish because those more those white cubes are coming up bang 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 the board is just getting cleared down before you can take those actions um, love that um, I love the idea of the the third worker coming out of the pub and giving you that third action it's a, it's a choice it's it's a huge investment early in the game to do that but that third worker huge huge advantage if you can get that and if you can make the best of it early on in the game and just be plugging out that third worker and grabbing the coal just really yes wow and due to its modulation and, and how it's so adaptable tony is just constantly tinkering with it and other designers have jumped in i mean we've just got a heap of expansions available for it um one of my favorites is the uh, daffodil line but there's that the trans australian line mount washington it involves dynamite uh, the acropolis one which is fantastic because it sees you your little coffins of your getting your now dead surveyor up to a, up to a cemetery at the end and building a mausoleum along with that every essen every game show every uk expo everything tony's always got one or two snowdonia promo cards like mrs larkin's washing machine which has a story behind it um, I can strongly recommend if you're into it and you're loving the game then you should follow Tony's blog on BGG um, every, um, every man has a shed which uh, he goes into all his design perspectives and and being Tony being a true vulgarian like myself he's not averse to the occasional swear word in there so not only fans are a special type of person they savor it and they collect the expansions and and just it's a game that could just be a pleasure to play every time the most fantastic thing i say about this modern age of board games where games can roll on for hours and hours and hours snowdonia is just so quick and succinct and to the point you get down you lay it on the table you're playing and it will tear through in an hour hour and a half max it's almost filler territory not quite but it's just one of those games that just boom, 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 you can churn through and you can play it and it's a satisfying experience every single time you play it um it's, it's brilliant um, there's the journey you're taking, you know, there's always a race to the end. It, it's got a definitive beginning and ending to the game. Um, it, it does everything so well, just, just effortlessly. So Mr. Boydell, I doff my cap to you, sir. Um, there's a reason why I class you as one of Britain's most exemplary game designers out there. Even if you are a foul mouthed, miserable old bastard, I still love you. I absolutely love you again. <laughs>